The 17th century French philosopher Blaise Pascal came up with his famous wager, Pascal's wager, in which he posited the view that whether or not God exists, it's to our advantage to assume as though he does. Um, it's uh, to our advantage to live as though God exists, to assume God exists, and to uh, act accordingly. Now, he lived in an age when it was pretty much common knowledge that God did exist. It seemed a bit silly, I'm sure, to a lot of his uh, contemporaries to have to actually come up with this sort of argument in the same sort of way as to say if you go to a, um, an Islamic country today and you go around trying to prove to everybody that God exists, they really wouldn't grasp what you were attempting to do. <laughs> That's all very well, but I don't think many of us these days are swayed by his arguments. It still doesn't prove whether or not God exists. Now, we base all of our assumptions on human consciousness, on, um, on uh, human existence, on pretty much everything, on a scientific way of thinking that's gone back um, probably a couple of thousand years, but really took off in the 18th century, um, around the time of Pascal, the uh, scientific and um, industrial revolutions. It now seems pretty much unarguable to most of us, based on all of that research, that consciousness is something that we can grasp, that it has a natural explanation, and that even if we don't know what it is now, even if we don't know what the conditions are that make it necessary, or where it comes from prior to birth, or where it goes after death, we can pretty much assume that, based on this belief in science that just seems so obvious to us, um, that it has a perfectly rational scientific edu uh, explanation. I'm not saying that I don't agree with that, but what I'm saying is I am as much a product of my environment as anyone else is. All of our thinking, our entire civilization, Western civilization itself, has at its fundamental core the idea that consciousness is a product of sentience and that sentience is uh, life. Well, this is not proven. It is an axiom, but it's not proven. But we live in an age where it seems a bit insane to come out and say that we don't know where consciousness comes from. And it does account for a lot of laziness, I think, in our thinking. Um, and it can lead to crazy sorts of conclusions like antinatalism. Now, I mentioned before that um, in the previous video, when I spoke of axioms, um, that this is an axiom upon which our entire civilization, our entire psychology, everything that we are as modern human beings is based, that, that everything can be scientifically explained. Okay, but you see where it leads to, though. It leads to ideas that may have <laughs> some pretty crazy implications. In other words, if we assume that, that sentience uh, is a necessary uh, precursor to consciousness or a, even a necessary ingredient into that, um, existence and sentience implies suffering. If we want to end suffering or harm, we end sentience or, uh, or consciousness and it's all gone forever. No more sentience, no more harm, no more suffering. Um, that's a bad idea, if you ask me, simply because it's the same idea as Pascal's wager. You're not actually proving anything by doing this. You're not actually... Uh, by, by coming up with these axioms as to what con consciousness is, what uh, harm is, and what, um, what uh, the relationship of all these things are to the physical world, you're not actually proving anything. You're just, we just come from a, a, a matrix, a cultural and psychological matrix, in which these things seem to be self-evident, and it seems crazy to question them. Well, I'm questioning them, but not, not in terms of how I expect everybody to live their real lives, but we have to question these things when we have to ask fundamentally existential questions, such as, is life worth living, or is it best for us to let ourselves peter out, peter out as a species? I would call that um, Pascal's roulette, or Pascal's Russian roulette. You know, Russian roulette, you take a gun uh, with six chambers, a revolver, you put one bullet in, you spin it, you close it, you point it to your head, click, okay, good, you live another day. Uh, you're, you know, you've only got, you've got five empty chambers and one full chamber. Um, 
So your your odds of, of are pretty good that you're right, but <laughs> if you're wrong, the the results are catastrophic. Um, it, in many ways, if you ask me, antinatalism is something like that. It's a, it's a form of Russian roulette that is based upon certain assumptions, certain axioms, that and it does seem to offer uh, a way out of certain um, uh, certain problems of human existence, such as suffering and harm. Um, but <laughs> it only is that way because we have assumed that it is. I'm not even saying that it's wrong. I'm not saying that, that consciousness is automatically divorced somehow from sentience and sentience and all that is somehow divorced from the physical universe. I'm not saying that at all, but what I'm saying is we don't know that and, and our assumption that it is, uh, that these things are interconnected, may speak more to our, um, to our uh, shall I say, our milieu, our environment, what we grew up in. Everything in our civilization militates towards that. Even Christians, actually, uh, religious people, seem to have this idea that death is a bad thing, that, uh, that, uh, that, that to be born is to be brought into a sinful world or whatever, and um, they don't really understand the idea that they're talking about an eternity in paradise or an eternity of damnation. It, I, don't, I, I get the sense from a lot of theists that it doesn't, the implications of that don't really sink in, which is why I often thought that most religious people don't really understand their own beliefs. However, I also believe that the other side of the coin is most people that put an exaggerated faith in science and its axioms don't really understand the implications of the th scientific method, nor do they understand the, um, I won't say errors, but the misconceptions that can result from putting too much faith in axioms. You end up in a situation um, that is difficult to argue against, but not impossible, whereby someone is saying that ending sentience actually makes sense. Now, I understand that that's probably just a... Uh, that statement could be taken as an appeal to, to emotion there, to, to sort of ridicule antinatalism in that way, to say that it's just a, a crazy, insane idea. But everything, again, in our civilization militates towards the idea that life is worth living. Everything in our thinking militates towards that. So, <clears throat> if we're going to actually abandon that idea that life is worth continuing as, uh, on, on, uh, on this plane of existence, I want very, very, very good reason why I should put that one bullet into the six chambers, spin it, and pull the trigger. Because that's exactly what the antinatalists are asking us to do is to do this, is to auto-extinct as a species based upon incomplete information and assumptions. It's the same thing. In, in Pascal's day, all that we had to lose was, well, okay, we die, we realize that there's no God, and that's the end of it, or lights out, or whatever. In this case, we're looking at something a little bit more serious than um, whether or not there's a God. <laughs> no, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll stick to playing chess or something a lot more harmless than um, Benatar's roulette. Pascal's wager, Pascal's roulette. Hmm. I, I'm sure we can come up with any number of uh, of, uh, of nicknames for that idea. The idea that we should risk everything on the assumptions that Benatar and the antinatalists make. Thank you.